This morning we are going to focus on Holy Spirit's power to witness unto Jesus. See, Holy Spirit's power to witness unto Jesus. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you see this is a key verse reading from King James Version. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon come up you. When will you receive power? When the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. And you shall be witnesses unto Jesus. You see? What is the purpose behind the power of the Holy Ghost? Be given unto you. The purpose is to be witnesses unto Jesus. You see? It is for that purpose that the power Is even Holy Spirit does not bring focus unto Himself, you see. Holy Spirit doesn't bring glory to Himself, you see. Holy Spirit wants to focus on Jesus, you see. There are great mistakes and ministries, you see. They try to receive the power of the Holy so that the all focus can go on to the ministry or go on to the minister. But that's not right, you see. The Holy Spirit's power doesn't work that way because the purpose given behind the power of the Holy Spirit is not for that purpose, you see. The purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit is to witness unto Jesus, you see. Is to focus on Jesus. Is to glorify is to exalt Jesus, is to magnify Jesus. That is the main underlying purpose actually. And so the first thing, the real purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit is to exalt Jesus. The real purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit is to exalt Jesus. John 15, 26, these are the words of Jesus. Why he is giving the Holy Spirit to the disciples? Why is he giving or sending the Holy Spirit upon the disciples? Why? He declares it. You see? John 15, 26. When the counselor comes, who is the counselor? The Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he If you do not believe nothing. 
thing is going to happen. Because Jesus always said, we come to you according to your faith. faith. If you do not have faith in these promises that Jesus gave about the Holy Spirit, nothing is going to happen. The churches will remain powerless. And second mistake or the error that people make is when they try to use the power of the Holy Spirit to focus upon themselves or to focus upon their ministries and to exalt their ministries, again you are jeopardizing the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not going to work. Because the underlying power as Jesus said in Acts 1 but you shall receive power so that you'll be witnesses unto me. You'll be witnesses unto Jesus. And so we need to focus on the preeminence of Jesus. Jesus should receive all the preeminence. You see, we read in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Colossians 1, 18 and 19. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the head of the body, the church? Jesus. You see, Jesus is the head of the body of the church. You see, Jesus is the head of the church. So all honor and all focus and all glory should go to Jesus. Because he is the head of the church. And then the verse goes on to say, he is the beginning and the firstborn. See, he is the beginning. He is the firstborn from among the dead. So that Supremacy. In everything, in everything, whatever you may do, who should receive the supremacy? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus should have all the supremacy. Why? Verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. You see, God's fullness dwells in Jesus. The God's fullness dwells. In Jesus. And that's why the power of the Holy Spirit is to focus on Jesus and to be His witnesses and to testify about Him. Secondly, the power of the Holy Spirit is for proclaiming salvation in Jesus Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit's power is for proclaiming salvation in Jesus Christ. You see, when you present and proclaim salvation in Jesus Christ, then only the power of the Holy Spirit is released. When we proclaim salvation in Jesus Christ, you see, then the power of the Holy Spirit is released to convict the sinners of their sin and to lead them to experience salvation. John chapter 16, verse 8. See, this is what Jesus said, John 16, 8. When He comes, who comes? The Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will commit the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. Unless the Holy Spirit convicts a sinner of his sin and about righteousness, He would not repent. He cannot repent. Then only He will repent. And he will receive grace to be saved. You see? It is all through the grace of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit that a person is born again. You see? The person is converted and saved. Without the word and the power of the Holy Spirit, no one can be born again. And that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim you see, the gospel of salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 31. In Acts chapter 4 verse 31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. They were filled with what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. For what reason? For what cause? To speak the word of God boldly. See? see, the power of the Holy Spirit is given to proclaim salvation in Jesus Christ. 
to proclaim the gospel of salvation without any fear. You see? People are afraid to tell about Jesus to others. There's a fear to proclaim the gospel. That fear comes from the devil. Nobody's trying to kill you or beat you up, but still you are feeling fear within yourself. You can overcome that fear only by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can overcome that weakness of proclaiming the gospel only through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Bible says the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Because in those days they were persecuted so badly, isn't it? They were taken out of their homes and cut into pieces, you see. How can they tell about Jesus in face of such situation? Only when they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they are filled with the boldness to tell about Jesus, you see. And Acts chapter 4 verse 33. Acts 4 33. With great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of Lord Jesus and much grace was upon them all. You see, with great power, power of whom? Power of the Holy Spirit. With great power of the Holy Spirit, they continued to testify that Jesus is alive. That Jesus has risen from the dead. The Sanhedrin and the leaders of the Jewish people and the Pharisees who nailed Jesus to the cross and killed him, they have threatened so strongly the disciples. Do not say Jesus is alive. Do not say Jesus has risen from the dead. They can only do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bible clearly says when they gave the great power of the Holy Spirit, the disciples went on proclaiming that Jesus is alive. He has risen again from the dead. You see? And to proclaim Jesus is alive, Jesus is a living God is very important. Especially in pagan nations, you see. Like the nation we come from is India, you see. It's a pagan nation, you see. Jesus is not just one of the one of the God among many God and gods, you see. He's not one of the God among many gods. He is only one God. Yes. And he is the only living God. Yes. He is the only living God. That's it. In order to proclaim that, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Without which you cannot do that. Otherwise they will say, what's wrong with our gods, you see? What's wrong with our idols, you see? What's wrong with our temples and our religions? Well, Jesus is the only living God, you see? And there is no other God besides him that takes the power of the Holy Spirit. And Apostle Paul says in Romans 15, verses 18 to 19, Romans 15, 18 to 19. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished, you see. You see, why there was such great power of the Holy Spirit being manifested in the ministry of Paul? The only reason was he focused on Jesus. He said, I will not venture. I will not even try to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished, you see. I speak only about Christ and Christ Jesus, he says. Through me leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done. And verse 19, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through signs and miracles, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, from Jerusalem all the way to Elikram. He could proclaim Jesus. And since he focused on Jesus, his ministry was with signs and miracles and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he concludes that verse 19. He says, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. What was the key of the powerful ministry of Paul? What was the key? What was the secret? The secret was the power of the Holy Spirit. Why there was power of the Holy Spirit? Because I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I have fully preached the gospel of Jesus. 
And that's the reason why there was power in his ministry. Power in his preaching. And we read in 1 Corinthians 1, 17 and 18. See what St. Paul says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 17 and 18. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the words of human wisdom, you see. He says Christ, Jesus sent him for what reason? For what purpose? To preach the gospel. The gospel, you see. To preach the gospel, not with human wisdom, you see. Lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You see? It is the power of God. The power of God, the Holy Spirit, is manifested when you focus on witnessing to Jesus. In exalting Jesus. Focusing on Jesus. Third thing. The Holy Spirit's power is to defeat Satan in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit's power is to defeat Satan in the lives of the people in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 12 verse 28. See what Jesus said. Matthew 12 28. But if I die by the Spirit of God that the kingdom of God has come. Jesus drove out and cast out demons by the power of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. See, he, he says it himself. He reveals the secret of his power. He reveals the secret of his power. Where it was lying? In the power of the Holy Spirit. He says I cast out demons. I drive Then the kingdom of God begins to establish and flourish and prosper. The Holy Spirit's power to cast out demons and defeat Satan in a person's life through the name of Jesus. You see, I've done a lot of missions work among the tribals and natives of India. You see? Lot of mission work. Lot of mission preaching among the tribals and the natives. Like United States also has natives, right? And what do they do? The natives they worship evil spirits, let me know. They worship evil spirits, they worship trees and plants and butterflies and snakes and the weavers and the birds and but they are worshipping evil spirits behind them actually. And so the natives in India also do the same thing, those native Indians. They worship, see the evil spirit. And many of them are demon possessed. And so we would go out with our mission team and we would go out into the deep forests and jungles and places like that. And many travels and these natives would come together and I'll preach, you see. And one day as I was preaching, you see. It must be a crowd of 100 people, you see, 100 people. And from them, four demon possessed places began to manifest. One guy from this side began screaming and jumping, and he was so wild. And so then I began to bind that evil spirit in the name of Jesus. I commanded to come out. And then in the other section of the crowd, there is another woman screaming loudly and crying out. Then at the back of the crowd, another guy is crying out. And in the middle of this, there is someone else crying out. And I said, the devil is trying to take over and destroy this gospel preaching. And so myself and my another brother who had the gift of casting out demons, he was with me. And we both began to move around the crowd. I left my front position and went into the crowd and we began to cast out those demons in the name of Jesus. Because we need to prove to them that Jesus is the living God. You see? And finally, after half an hour of struggle and warfare, those demons went out of them. You see? And everything became quiet. 
And you know many people gave their lives to Jesus. They gave their lives to Jesus. Otherwise they would not, you see. And they gave their lives to Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit's power is to defeat Satan in the name of Jesus. Otherwise the devil doesn't want the people he has bound by his bondages and chains to be free and be transferred into the kingdom of God. No, he doesn't want that. He will not allow that. The fourth thing is, the Holy Spirit has power to heal the sick, to prove the compassion and the mercy of Jesus. You see? Holy Spirit has the power to heal the various kinds of sickness and the sick people in order to prove them the compassion and the love of God and the mercy of God found in Jesus Christ. We read in Mark 16, 15. See what Jesus says to the disciples. Mark 16, 15. He said to them, Jesus said to the disciples, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all the creation. He said, Go and preach the good news, the gospel, to all the creation, no matter who they are. Whether poor or rich or tribals or natives or they are urban people or Village people, whoever they, whatever the religion might be, whatever the nation. He said to the disciples, go into all the world and preach the good news to all the creations. What did the disciples do? What did they do? They did exactly what Jesus had commanded them to do. See, read verse 20. Mark 16, 20 is a very powerful verse. Then the disciples went down and preached everywhere. They carried out the commandment of the Lord, the Great Commission. They went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed His word by signs and miracles that accompanied it. See what happened now? Because they preached the gospel of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit was released by Jesus to work signs and miracles. To confirm to the people that what these disciples are preaching is true. You see? It is true fact. They are preaching about Jesus. And Jesus is alive today. See, people have to see this. You see? Then only they will be born again. You see? How does the Lord confirm that what is being preached is true? By doing miracles. And signs and wonders. That is how it does. And this is very important in pagan nations like India and in Islamic nations. You see, many, many people are thus in Iraq, Iran, and in the Middle East only when they see the miraculous power of Jesus. You see? It's only by that. Otherwise, they are so deeply taught in Islam, they will. They are bound by such chains, they cannot be saved. Only when they see the miraculous power of Jesus, that instantly they are saved. See? They leave Islam and follow Jesus. No matter what persecution then comes from their family, or from their community, or from their community of the mosque, or from their own nation, then they become very strong. But they have to see, you see, that miraculous power of God. And if you go on YouTube, you will find so many miracles happening in Iran, Iraq, they will tell you about it. If you go and search on YouTube called Father Makaria, he is in Egypt. He is a Coptic priest, you see. But he prays for the Sikh people of Islamic gatherings. And the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak. Okay? And this is what promised, Jesus promised actually that this will happen in Mark 16 18. See what is it? Mark 16 18 in that same place. They will pick up snakes with their hands. When they have been deadly poisoned, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will. Get well. They will get well. See? They will get well, yes. 
If you go out and preach the gospel to all the nations, he says, and if you lay hands on the sick people, then the Lord will confirm his word by signs and miracles. You see, once the missions committee was with me and we had gone down into this uh, southern part of Gujarat, which is all filled of tribals and natives and and as I was preaching, it was a big crowd, you see. They don't have doctors, you see. They don't have clinics and hospitals. They're in jungles. They have no modern medicine. Medical. Many of them are sick, you see. And as I was preaching, they know that the healing is going to take place, so they bring their sick people, you see. And right away, you see, the blind were seeing, the deaf were listening, the dog were talking and miracles were happening, isn't it? And the committee members of my missions committee, they said, Pastor, we have never seen something like this before in our life. I said, this is happening because Jesus is here right now. They said, we are feeling as if we are in the days of Jesus. We are in the days of Jesus. I said, yes. Jesus' is invisible presence is with us because we are obeying His great commission. Go and preach into all the world of news, to all creation. And they will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. And verse 20, the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed His gospel by signs and miracles. He will prove to, prove to His word. He will do that. In America you might not see this very often. But in nations like this, it's very easy. There is the plan of God, you see. Acts chapter 4 verse 4. Let's read the verse 7. Acts chapter 4 verse 7 to 10. Acts chapter 4 verses 7 to 10. They had Peter and John who had the sanitary leaders. The 70 leaders council of the Jews. The Sanhedrin court had brought Peter and John before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? How did you do this? They are asking. By what power did you do this? Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you, healed. You see, chapter 3 of Acts, Peter and John, as they were going to the temple, there was a crippled man at the gate, and he was healed. He was healed, and he was leaping and jumping and praising God with joy, and the senators were asking, by what power? By whose name did you do this? And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. You see? Where was the source of his power? In Peter, the filling of the Holy Spirit. It is through the Holy Spirit's power, he said, this happened. And the result was Acts 4 4. But many who heard the message, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. Many believed that day as this people man was here. And how many were added to the church? 5,000. 5,000 5, were added to the church. When the Lord was working signs and miracles, people knew that Jesus was alive. Jesus is a living God. He is a God who is alive. You see? He is very much alive. Finally, the Holy Spirit's power is to stay focused on Jesus. Remain focused on Jesus. You see, the power of the Holy Spirit is to stay focused on Jesus. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Look at Stephen. See? The Holy Spirit's power is to remain focused on Jesus. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. 
is a Stephen was not one of the twelve apostles, was he? No. Philip was he one of the twelve apostles? No, they were not apostles. They were just ordinary disciples that were born again later on actually. But now they are filled with the Holy Spirit, you see. This keeps on happening generation after generation. You see? The power of the Holy Spirit was not only limited to the apostles. That's a wrong teaching. Let me tell you. That's a completely wrong teaching, you see. If you teach them, you will make churches powerless. And there will be no people born again and no people saved. Jesus gave the power of the Holy Spirit for all the generations. Because Peter when he was preaching on the very first message, he said, the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you and for your children. That's what he said. It's not only to us, he said. It has been given, the gift of the Holy Spirit and His power has been given unto you and to your children and to your descendants. He said that. It's for all the descendants from generation to generation. And so Stephen was filled with the power and great wonders and miracle signs were happening among people. Ah, how was it happening? Why was it happening? You see, when Stephen was on his trial of faith, when he was being persecuted and he was standing on the trial for his faith, his focus was on Jesus. Read that. It was 55 and 56. Acts 7, 55 and 56. As he was on his trial for his faith, his focus was only on Jesus, you see. Acts 7, 55, 56, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven. Where was he looking? He was looking unto Jesus. Look up to heaven to Jesus and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heaven. And the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. See, Holy Spirit's power comes only by focusing on Jesus. Focusing on Jesus. Spirit filled Stephen did great wonders and miraculous signs because he stayed focused on exalting and glorifying Jesus. Shall we pray? You see, the power of the Holy Spirit is to testify to Jesus, to focus on Jesus, to preach and proclaim the gospel of Jesus without any fear, with boldness. If you are convinced that you want the power of the Holy Spirit manifested in your life and through your life, then remain focused on Jesus. Glorify Jesus, exalt Him, and boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus. Pray in your hearts, Lord, many, many times and many, many days we lead powerless lives. Even though we are born again Christians, devout, devoid of the power of the Holy Spirit, forgive us, O Lord. Because, Lord, our focus is not where it should be. It has to be upon Jesus. Lord, help us that we may be passionate about Jesus, that He is the living God. And we need to proclaim that Jesus is the only one living God to every person of this world, no matter what. And then, O oh Lord, you manifest your power to prove the gospel, to confirm it with amazing signs and wonders and miracles. That people may be transformed from kingdoms, Satan's kingdom, to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father God, for speaking to us this morning and revealing the secrets 
of the power of the Holy Spirit. We commit ourselves in your hands. Help us to obey, O Lord. Help us to obey. We ask in Jesus' name.